Imagine parking your electric car with just 5% battery, ordering a coffee, and returning 10 minutes later with a full charge and a range of over 400 kilometers. It sounds like something out of a futuristic movie, right? But Tesla is about to make this a routine. And the secret behind this lies in a battery that defies the concept of durability. This isn't just another small advancement. We're talking about a decades-long leap in longevity, driven by a radical change in the chemical composition. Aluminum. While the market still debates the advantages of lithium, Elon Musk is already laying the groundwork for a quiet revolution, starting at the root of the electric car, the battery. Today, Tesla's electric cars use lithium-ion batteries capable of withstanding between 2,000 and 3,000 charge cycles, already considered an industry milestone. But what Tesla is promising for the Model 2 is four to five times that. The new aluminum-ion battery can achieve up to 10,000 complete cycles without significant loss of capacity. This means that, in theory, the car could drive about 4 million kilometers before the battery begins to show signs of wear. It's such a drastic change that it virtually eliminates the most common concern among electric vehicle owners. What if the battery starts to die? This new reality turns the concept of depreciation that haunts the used car market upside down. Today, when someone tries to sell a three-year-old EV, the buyer already expects a loss of range. Even a slight drop, like 8% in battery capacity, can significantly reduce the car's value. With 10,000 cycles available, this kind of anxiety simply disappears. The car ages, but the battery remains virtually intact. It's as if time begins to pass more slowly for electric cars or at least for their energetic hearts. The most radical change may be off the radar of the average consumer, but it's crucial. Fleet operators, delivery companies, taxi drivers, app drivers, all face an invisible but constant problem, the cost of battery replacement. A car driven 300 kilometers a day accumulates more than 100,000 kilometers per year. With today's batteries, Replacement is inevitable in seven years. With the new technology, that same car could continue running for more than 30 years with the original battery. The business logic changes completely. Less maintenance, fewer replacements, more profit. And this domino effect extends beyond the corporate market. In retail, this opens up a new possibility. The idea of owning a single car for decades without losing performance. For those who constantly trade in cars for fear of aging batteries, that worry disappears. A Model 2 today could be running on the same battery in 2055 with no noticeable loss of performance. Sounds absurd, maybe, but that's exactly the kind of paradigm shift Tesla is bringing to the table. Another point that often goes unnoticed is the hidden environmental impact. Producing a battery generates a huge carbon debt. Extracting, refining, assembling, all of this consumes energy and pollutes. But if that battery lasts five times longer, the same environmental burden is spread over many more kilometers. Emissions per kilometer drop dramatically. It's an indirect but powerful way to make electric cars even cleaner than they already are. And there's more. The used car market, currently suffering from so-called degradation anxiety, is gaining momentum. With a virtually immortal battery, cars that are five or 10 years old will still have high resale value. This facilitates access to EVs for those who depend on the secondhand market, a huge segment of the population. With greater confidence, more people enter the market and the cycle feeds back. The question that remains is, with a battery that can last 100 years with moderate use, does it still make sense to replace your car every five years? Are we on the verge of a more conscious and long-lasting consumption model? Or will the appeal of new still prevail? Perhaps the answer lies in the next section, where recharge time enters the scene to challenge everything we thought we understood about range. For years, the magic number for any electric car was range. The more kilometers per charge, the better. 
But the arrival of aluminum ion batteries disrupts this logic in a way that many people haven't yet realized. Instead of asking, how many kilometers can you drive? The new question is, how long will it take you back on the road? That's because these batteries promise to recharge from zero to 100% in 10 minutes. Yes, the time it takes to get a cup of coffee. And when you combine that with a 400 km to range, you realize you might not need a car that can go 600 or 700 km anymore. You just need speed to keep walking. For anyone who's ever waited in line at a charging station, this changes everything. Today, even at Tesla's most modern superchargers, the average time to take a lithium-ion battery from 10% to 80% is 25 to 30 minutes. Now imagine reducing that to 10 minutes, and not to 80%, but to 100%. The difference is more than just a time saving. It's a new way of using the car. You can stop quickly, charge everything, and be on your way before your favorite podcast even ends. This completely changes driver behavior. What about long trips? Is it still worth it? That's the big catch. Let's assume a 600 kilometer trip. With a traditional car, you might make a half hour stop to recharge. With the new battery, you'd make two 10 minute stops. All in all, it saves time. Stopping time is no longer an issue because the car charges at almost the same speed as a tank of gas. The difference? lower cost, and no CO2 emissions. In other words, the idea that EVs aren't suitable for the road is becoming increasingly weak. Another powerful aspect of this fast charging is the impact it can have on existing infrastructure. A charging station with eight spaces that currently serves 16 cars per hour with 30-minute sessions could now serve up to 48 vehicles per hour. Triple capacity without building anything new this alone is a very strong argument for accelerating the adoption of aluminum ion. More cars on the road, fewer lines, less wasted time. And best of all, without having to clog cities with new charging stations. But of course, there is a catch. These batteries have lower energy density than lithium ion batteries. While lithium delivers between 250 and 270 dotiwag, Aluminum ion batteries deliver between 160 and 200 dodrit dewagged. In practice, this means that a battery of the same size carries slightly less energy. The result? The car runs less on a single charge. But this disadvantage disappears when you consider recharge time. After all, if in 10 minutes you're ready to go another 400 kilometers, this defect becomes irrelevant. This shift in perspective is similar to what happened with cell phones. In the beginning, everyone wanted a battery that lasted for days. After fast charging became the standard, no one cared as much anymore. Because now, 15 minutes of charging guarantees hours of use. With electric cars, we're about to experience this same kind of transition. Range is no longer the focus. How quickly you recharge is the new differentiator. And for those who think that 30 or 40 kilometers less range makes a difference, it's worth remembering that 95% of trips made in the U.S. are less than 50 kilometers. In other words, in everyday use, the difference in range between batteries is almost negligible. Fast charging becomes the real game changer. Those who have to wait half an hour to travel another 400 kilometers are at a disadvantage compared to those who wait only 10 minutes. And this for the average user can be the difference between accepting or rejecting the transition to an electric car. Now, with all this speed and efficiency, a new question arises. How much will it all cost? Will this promising technology fit in our budget? Or will it just be another futuristic luxury reserved for the wealthy? The answer may surprise you, because aluminum holds an advantage that goes beyond speed, and it's directly linked to the Model 2's final price. Few people stop to think about it, but the price of an electric car today is largely dictated by a single component, the battery. In many models, it represents up to one third of the total cost, and that's where aluminum's biggest advantage comes in. Unlike lithium, which depends on specific countries and faces absurd price fluctuations, 
Aluminum is abundant, cheap, and already integrated into global production chains. While lithium once cost over you $70,000 per ton, aluminum hovers around $2,000, a $3,000, a huge difference that directly affects the final price of the car. To translate this into practical numbers, today, a 50 kilowatt lithium-ion battery costs, on average, six to $500. With aluminum-ion technology, this number can be cut in half, falling between us three two hundred dollars dollars use three thousand five hundred. We're talking about savings of over three thousand dollars on the battery alone. And the most interesting thing is that this doesn't require any magic. The secret lies in cheaper raw materials and a simpler, more scalable production process. These savings are directly reflected in the car's price. And this is where the Model 2 begins to pose a real threat to all competitors. While other manufacturers are still struggling to offer affordable lithium-ion electric cars, Tesla may launch a below use $25,000 with an intact profit margin. And this part is important. It's not just about reducing the price, but about keeping the business profitable. This opens the door to competing with models like the BYD Dolphin or the Chevy Bolt on equal terms, but with more durable technology, faster charging, and lower maintenance costs. Instead of squeezing margins to compete, Tesla changes the rules of the game. Another point that favors aluminum is its recycling potential. Almost 75% of all aluminum ever produced in the world is still in use, it's almost infinitely reusable, and a global structure already exists to recycle it on a large scale. This means that, at the end of a battery's useful life, much of the material can be directly reused to produce new cells. The result is a much more sustainable cycle, with less reliance on mining and less toxic waste discharged into the environment. Furthermore, aluminum's global production is well distributed. Countries on every continent have the capacity to extract and refine the metal, which reduces geopolitical risks. With lithium, the game is concentrated. Australia, China, Chile, and Argentina control almost 90% of the supply. This creates uncertainty and increases price volatility. With aluminum, the supply chain is more stable, predictable, and less susceptible to embargoes, conflicts, or monopolies. For an automaker looking to scale production globally, this is a huge advantage. This predictability allows Tesla to plan more accurately. And when a company can forecast the production cost of its vehicles years in advance, it can guarantee fairer prices to consumers without surprises down the road. This stability is also crucial to enabling bolder expansion plans, such as factories on new continents or partnerships with local governments. Aluminum, in this sense, is more than just a battery component it's a global strategy tool. And speaking of production, it's worth remembering that Tesla is already investing heavily in gigafactories with optimized processes for the Model 2. If these factories can use aluminum ion cells with fewer steps and less reliance on volatile raw materials, the efficiency gains multiply. The car will be cheaper, faster, and with a lower environmental impact. This speeds up its arrival to the end consumer and reinforces the brand's positioning as a leader in accessible innovation. After seeing how aluminum can cut costs and facilitate scalability, the question remains, will the 400 kilometer of range of this Model 2 be enough for the daily life of those who will use it? And if so, how does that range fit into this new proposal where what matters is not how far you drive, but how and when you recharge? That's the next piece of the puzzle. When it comes to autonomy, many people still assume that the more, the better. But this logic starts to lose traction when you look at real-world usage data. In the United States, for example, 95% of daily trips are under 50 kilometers. This means that for the vast majority of drivers, a battery with 250 miles of range isn't just enough. It's more than they use in almost a week. And that's exactly where the Tesla Model 2 aim. Tolentikiums. A compact, lightweight car with 250 miles of range and capable of recharging faster than it takes to fill a tank. 
Comparisons with other models are inevitable. The Model 3 offers 272 miles, the Ionic 6 reaches 361, and the Lucid Air exceeds 400. However, all of them take at least 25 to 30 minutes to charge. The Bolt, for example, requires almost an or on a 5550 Sadi charger to fill the electric tank. The Model 2, if promises are confirmed, would do this in just 10 minutes. And here comes the big twist. Tesla is trading a little bit of range for a giant leap in convenience. It's that old story. Would you rather have a car that runs 600 kilometers and keeps you tied to the charger for half an hour, or one that runs 400 kilometers and lets you go in 10 minutes? When you consider time as the deciding factor, the choice begins to change. And Tesla seems to understand this better than anyone. The strategy is clear. Make the Model 2 so easy and fast to recharge that the need for long range completely loses its meaning. The car becomes almost an extension of your phone. You charge without even realizing it. The focus is not on breaking distance records, but on ensuring continuity of use without frustration. And that's what sets the Model 2 apart from its competitors. It doesn't aim to be the most powerful car, the fastest car or the most luxurious. It aims to be the most practical. And in this new world of fast charging, practicality is more valuable than it seems. Aluminum ion technology is the perfect cog for this new concept. A battery that charges quickly, lasts decades, and costs less. Furthermore, with a 50 kilobatterainer battery, the Model 2 delivers the same range as the Bolt, for example, but with a charging advantage. And even though it lags slightly behind the Model 3, the time lost charging becomes so small that no one cares anymore. This is even more relevant for those who live in big cities and don't have easy access to fast chargers. After all, charging 250 miles at home in a few hours is more than enough for most urban routines. Another interesting factor is the change in consumer behavior. If drivers were previously obsessed with autonomy, they are now beginning to value it. Flexibility and agility. And this even changes the way we choose a car. What was once a race for numbers now becomes a search for efficiency in real world use. Tesla seems to be anticipating this behavior, shaping the Model 2 not to impress on the spec sheet, but to fit seamlessly into everyday life. The idea that 250 miles is few stems from an old mindset rooted in the trauma of being stuck at slow chargers. But when recharging takes 10 minutes, that worry becomes a thing of the past. And with it, space opens for a new philosophy. Sufficient autonomy combined with instant recharge is the new luxury. It's not about showing off your reach. It's about never worrying about it again. But even with all this logic well tied together, there is still one factor that could make this whole promise fall apart. Scalability. It's not enough to be revolutionary in the lab. It has to work in millions of cars driving in the real world. And that's precisely where the risk lies and Tesla's possibly boldest leap yet. Tesla is accustomed to taking risks. That's how it was with the first Roadster, the Model S, Autopilot, and even the Cybertruck. 